This module will embark on a journey through the realm of financial statement creation, specifically focusing on the crucial steps of adding formulas and links. With a spotlight on Microsoft Excel, a versatile tool widely employed for crafting financial statements, we will explore the intricacies of seamlessly integrating formulas and links into your financial reports. We have now opened an Excel sheet and we will delve into the steps involved in elevating your financial reporting game through the strategic use of formulas and links. Now, there are various ways to structure your financial statements. And in this exploration, we'll walk through two primary methods with its unique advantages. The first involves separate sheets for the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement, with each tab providing a clear and distinct view of each financial aspect. So for instance, in this separately isolating the financial statements will keep them separate and will ensure that you have a clear understanding. In the income statement tab, we have the income statement for San Mart separately displayed. In the balance sheet tab, we have the balance sheet for San Mart. And likewise, in the cash flow tab, we have the cash flow statement for San Mart. Alternatively, you can opt for a more consolidated approach, arranging all the statements horizontally within a single sheet, offering a comprehensive snapshot of your financial landscape. We will be having a look at the consolidated approach in the upcoming module. But in brief, if you consolidate the financial statements horizontally, this is what it would look like. You'll have the financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement arranged horizontally. As we navigate through the process, we'll focus on the income statement and elucidate how formulas and linking can streamline the entire process. The first step involves efficiently entering the financial data, including the revenues, the gross profit, the expenses, and finally, the interest expense and the income taxes to arrive at the net earnings. Once the data is in place, the real magic begins with the application of formulas for accurate calculations. Let's transport ourselves to 2018 and envision a thriving business called San Mart. In this scenario, San Mart achieved remarkable success with sales revenue reaching an impressive $1.1 million. Diversifying its revenue streams, Sandmart engaged with third-party vendors such as Grubhub, Uber Eats, and DoorDash, which contributed around $144,000 to its total revenue. However, when there are sales, there's also the potential for returns, refunds, or discounts we see a negative value of $23,000 in cell 9. Calculate the net revenue, we won't manually add the figures. Instead, we'll employ the very simple yet powerful sum formula. The versatility of using formulas lies in their ability to be dragged both vertically and horizontally, and a single change in any relevant cell will automatically update the calculations. In cell B10, we see that we have a sum function that adds B7 through B9 to arrive at the total net revenue for 2018, which is $1.225 million. Now, I can simply drag the formula horizontally, and it's as simple as this. Transitioning to the world of linking statements, we'll demonstrate how net earnings from the income statement can be linked to the balance sheet. Let's assume that Sandmart's owners decide to retain all the net earnings for the first five years from 2018 to 2022. So for instance, in the year 2018, Sandmart had net earnings of 144,506. So if I go on the balance sheet tab, if I look at the 2018 retained earnings over here, you will see that this is linked to our previous tab. It's 144,506. 
Similarly, the net earnings in 2020 were 204,800.8. If I go in the balance sheet tab, I see 204,800.8. And this is a rounded number. If you want to see the exact number, you can increase the decimal places. And that's exactly what we have in the previous tab. So the retained earnings line has been linked to the respective income statement line, as you can see in the formula. This interconnection ensures data consistency across multiple statements. The beauty of these formulas and links lies in their scalability. They aren't confined to one sheet. Instead, you can extend them across different financial statements. For example, net earnings flow into retained earnings in the balance sheet, and they also influence the figures of any cash flow statement. And this comes directly from the income statement. Now, let's go to the sales analysis tab, and we will explore additional formulas that can be a part of your financial reporting arsenal. We have a list of sales for Sandmart over here, and we need to know how many customers visited the store on a particular day and the revenue generated from those visits. The counter formula comes into play for calculating the number of customers by instructing Excel to count sales based on specific criteria, such as in-store sales. If I go in cell F4, I see that we have a counter formula. All it does is it has a look at the list and it counts the number of sales that we have highlighted in the formula over here. So in this listing, sales appeared 14 times. So the count if formula returns 14. Similarly, the sum if formula helps calculate the total revenue generated, offering insights into the financial performance of different sales channels. As we discussed, Sandmart also has third-party vendors like Grubhub and Uber Eats. So for instance, if we are just interested in the number of sales that are generated for these 14 items, we use the sum if formula that has a look at the original listing, that is B4 through B24. It has a look at the description and wherever it mentions sales, adds the respective cells in the listing C4 through C24. And ultimately, we get the result of $25,210. Now, if we are interested in the number of customers through Uber Eats, we'll just use the same counter formula. We'll have a look at the original listing. Excel will count for us the number of times Uber Eats appears in this listing. And that is a grand total of two times. Even if you look manually, just to verify, Uber Eats appears once over here, and then the second time it appears over here. So in this listing, it appears twice. The counter formula seems to work. If we now want to add the sales revenue generated from Uber Eats, we'll use the sum if formula because we are interested in summing the total revenue from Uber Eats. We'll have a look at the original listing. We'll search for Uber Eats in the original listing. And then we will instruct Excel to add the revenue numbers that are in C4 to C24. These formulas not only simplify daily analysis, but also empower businesses like Sandmart to assess the effectiveness of partnerships with third party vendors regularly. This level of granularity aids in the strategic decision making and resource allocation. In conclusion, adding formulas and links to financial statements transforms static reports into dynamic, interconnected financial landscapes. As you embrace these techniques, you empower yourself to navigate the intricate terrain of financial reporting with finesse and precision. Stay tuned for insights into unleashing the full potential of Excel in your financial endeavors. 
If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.